morning, we greet all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we want to call your attention to the book of Kings, 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 8. The text reads, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water and a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it. And bring it to me. And afterward make some for yourself and some for your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which she spoke by Elijah. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick, and his Sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of his arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow which whom I lodged by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times. And cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he was revived. 
And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is true. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Most High God. For a thought today, I simply want to leave with you prayer still works. Prayer still works. On last Sunday, we began a sermon series by examining the life of Elijah. We began the series by taking a look at God instructing Elijah to go and live by the brook of Cherith. God had placed Elijah in boot camp because he needed to teach Elijah survival skills. Every born again believer must spend some alone time with God to be able to enhance or develop his or her own set of skills. The skills that God would teach Elijah would be skills that he would use and rely upon for the rest of his life. This series began by God demonstrating to Elijah that you can survive even when your brook dries up. God illustrates for Elijah that he would protect him from all hurt, harm, and danger. He told Elijah to go and to hide himself by the brook of Cary. Not only would God protect him, but God would make provisions for Elijah in the time of need. In other words, God would take care of Elijah and provide for him all of the needs that he would stand in the need of in the time of trouble. God allowed the ravens to bring him bread and meat in the morning and God allowed the ravens to bring him bread and meat in the evening. But not only does God protect him and make provisions for him, but more importantly, God was saying to Elijah that you're going to go through some things, but I will prepare you for the challenges that you may face. In that portion of the scripture, the focus was preparing Elijah for the journey. The journey to deal with King Ahab, the, the journey to deal with Jezebel, the journey to deal with people who would prefer to worship Baal rather than worshiping God. However, today when we take a further look, a scrutiny of the text that we are dealing with uh, this morning, it's important for us that we read for ourselves and understand for ourselves that prayer still works. It's important that the body of Christ remember during this pandemic that prayer still works. And I believe that if uh, I could call on a few uh, Bible characters to testify that many of them would testify that prayer still works. If we ask Abraham, he would say that prayer uh, 
allow me to be the father of many nations. If we could have a conversation with Moses, he would say, prayer delivered me and over two million people through the Red Sea. If we could have a conversation with the Hebrew boys, they would say prayer brought us out of a fiery furnace. If we could talk to Daniel, Daniel would say prayer brought me out of the lion's den. And certainly if we could have a conversation with Paul and Silas, they would say prayer brought us out of the prison cell. And certainly, even if we ask our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he would say that prayer brought him out of a borrowed tomb. My brothers and my sisters, I simply want to convey to each and every one of you that prayer still works. Today, the narration of the scripture centers around Elijah being tested and trained by God. Thus far, God's miraculous powers have benefited the prophet only. In the next few episodes, though the Lord works miracles through Elijah, which establishes his status as the man of God, we will see that in this episode that God was moving through a widow woman and her dying son. To begin this particular episode, the Lord instructs the prophet to leave the brook that once sustained him, that once gave him life, but now the brook has dried up. And he says to Elijah that you must go to Zarephath, that's in Sidon. But when you get there, there will be a widow who will give you food to eat. Zarephath is located in Phoenicia, the very heart of Baal worship. Here, Yahweh, God himself, would defeat Baal in his own territory. Yes, God will show the people who were willing to worship him that he indeed had the power to heal, the power to save, and the power to deliver. The Baal worshipers and the prophets of Baal explain that the drought was a sign that Baal was dead and that he could not help the widow and her son. In the absence of Baal, who lies impotent and lifeless, God would step in to assist the widow and the orphan. And this is done in the heartland of where people thought Baal had power. Yes, this morning, my brothers and my sisters, uh, because of God's provision, Elijah teaches us that prayer still works. We know that prayer still works because both Elijah and the widow woman experience the purpose of God. In this episode, God wanted the people to understand that they could no longer halt between two opinions. If God was the God of everything, if he was El Shaddai, if he was Jehovah Jireh, if he was all that is, then serve him. And God says, then, if you think Baal is all of that, then serve him. But while God sent Elijah to allow the widow woman to take care of him, was because God wanted them to experience 
his purpose. Even though there was a drought, it brought about a famine in the land. The widow woman had a bit of flour. She had a dab of oil. And she only had a few sticks of wood. The widow woman decided that I'm going to make this last supper. I'm going to make this last meal. And I'm going to go to my secret place where me and my son can die. But God has a mighty way. And his mighty way is so sweet. God had another purpose. It's important, my brothers and my sisters, that we realize that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Elijah didn't really understand the purpose. The widow woman didn't understand his purpose. But God had a purpose to teach and to train them that no matter how dark the night may seem, no matter how long the day may be, that God can and will take care of you. Not only does Elijah and the widow woman get an opportunity to experience the purpose of God, but they experience the power of God. Yes, here it is, the widow woman preparing to die. She had to go through the famine in the land. She had to go through psychologically dealing with the lack of food. And in the midst of dealing with the lack of food, her only son stops breathing. Here it is that God made provisions for Elijah and the widow woman that could be sustained by food. But here it is that her son stops breathing. Her son is about to die. And the widow woman asked the question, Elijah, did you come just to look at me and my son die. So it is that Elijah petitioned God. In the 19th verse, Elijah says, give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room and laid him on his own bed. I don't know why the Bible used the word upper room, but I believe that the Bible was trying to get us to say that Elijah took her son to a place that was familiar to him, a place that every now and again that he would get down on his knees and pray to an almighty God. He went to a familiar place that every now and then he would open up the windows of heaven and begin to call on the name of God. There is somebody who is going through something, but I want you to know that you are about to experience the power of God. For the Bible says, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is by the living power of God. And I can remember the old church back in the day used to sing every now and again that everything is moving by the power of God. Well, my brothers and my sisters, Elijah and this widow woman experienced the purpose of God. They experienced the power of God. But now they get an opportunity to experience the peace of God. Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. 
And Elijah said, see, your son lives. He is alive. Yes, when you know the power of God, God will give you peace. Then the widow woman said to Elijah, now by this, I know without a shadow of doubt that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord that's in your mouth is true. Yes, the mother experienced a peace from God that surpasses all understanding. The Bible says God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, prayer still works. I dare you to go into your upper room. I dare you to go into your secret closet. I dare you to call him by name. For when you call him by name, God will show up. And when God shows up, he will show up. Prayer still works. How do you know that prayer still works? Because Elijah and the widow woman experience the purpose of God. Elijah and this widow woman experience the power of God. And ultimately, after going through what they went through, they experience the peace of God. And the hymn writer reminds us when peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billow roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul my brothers and my sisters prayer still works God bless you and heaven smile Thank you.